Hello everybody and welcome back to Juno New Origins where as promised we have arrived here with the druid intact so we're just going to make our way on up and let's deposit this in the mountain camp. So we just need to arrive in this circle and then drop off the supplies which should be a simple application of the spacebar. So let's bring this to a halt. There we go. And we need to make sure the small light box is grounded. Cool. There we go. Mission complete. I like how the box immediately disappeared. But that is now done. So we're going to recover this craft. Perfect. And now the question is, what else do we have here? Well, we've got a couple of station missions. And that's kind of it. So we could do the Spaceport Esperanza mission. These are awkward, and I kind of prefer not to do it. We also got this, which I think we already did. I'm noticing that this pays like half as much, though. So, 50 million for this solar array, huh? That's starting to get pretty chintzy, considering how much it costs us to launch our vehicle. So, that is definitely a concern. Do we not have any progression missions available? Well, let's refresh our contracts, and let's see if anything pops up. No. Okay. Let's grab this solar array mission. That'll be 50 million. I wonder if we could combine these together into a single launch. I'm going to accept both of them. And let's see what that might end up looking like. So we would need to open up our space station launcher, right? And then we would need to get rid of this, and this habitation module we would actually keep. I'm wondering how big and how heavy the solar array is. Oh wait, this wants us to bring in a nexus cross? Okay. Well, we could delete that, and then we can put this guy in and this solar panel array, which does not connect here. Okay. So the docking port is there. That is definitely noted. I think we're going to have to do this in multiple launches, potentially. I was hoping we'd be able to put this here and then use this to separate back out and then dock this in separately elsewhere. That was the idea anyway. For now, that doesn't appear to be the best of options. So instead, we may have to move this out to the side. This can only attach at the attachment point. Okay, so we're going to need multiple attachment points then for this. So if we wanted to do that, one way that we could do it is via utilizing struts. So we can put in a strut here and drop that down a little bit. This positioning isn't going to be exactly where I want it, but then we can attach this in like that. Then we can bring in a second strut, which I'm just going to duplicate here. And this strut we would put in like over here, right? And then we would need to position these correctly. So we would need to move this guy over to like here, and then this guy could get moved in a little bit. And it would be something kind of like this. Then the fairing would go in here. And we're not necessarily super happy with the positioning. Um, I don't know what I just did. Something went wrong. Okay. We cloned 17 parts, which is definitely not what we want. Okay, so we know for a fact that we're going to need to move this guy back a smidge, about there. And I want to make sure that they're relatively evenly placed. Yeah, something like that. And then this is now poking out on both sides. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to not clone the fairing. Get out of here. What I want to do is I want to get clipped in here, right? And I want to select this strut. There we go. And I want to grab the positioning tool here. So we want to move into here, and we want to set the X position to zero, like that. Okay. So I want to do the same thing over here with this strut. 
that X position should also be at zero. And now we know that we're going to have to enlarge this fairing a little bit to be about there. So in theory, we can now launch this all in one go. And this is actually not too bad of a thrust to wait to start with, but that's in vacuum. So it's going to be 1.19. That is a low thrust to wait to start with. It might be okay. Emphasis on maybe. I'm going to save this craft here, and we'll overwrite that. We might need to scale up its thrust to weight at launch a little bit, and there are a couple of ways we could go about doing that. But for right now, I want to just put this out on the DSC launch pad here. And we're going to want to make sure that we have our monoprop off, like that. Our solar panels are inside, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they are. So in this case, yeah, we have the same situation going on. I'm probably going to put the solar array off to the side, and then the Nexus Cross in line with the other stuff that we've got going on right now is the way that I'll probably assemble that. But I want to run a quick test here to see what this ends up looking like. Our timing is almost certainly going to be bad. We can check that. Um, yeah, it's not going to be great timing. But it's not terrible timing either. It's actually pretty close to being reasonable. But we can move this on over. And the question is, what does our actual thrust look like? Do we have enough thrust to do this? It's going to be really slow off of the pad. Yeah, this isn't going to go well. <laughs> yeah, so we would have to retry that and we'd have to go up a bit more before we pitched over that's fine that's just because we're very low thrust to weight so we'd want to put this at a 60 degree heading and just launch this straight up for right now and we would have to turn the rcs off again wait until we get a little altitude and a little vertical speed and you can see our thrust to weight is already increasing which isn't surprising at all now we would be able to bring this over to about a 60 degree pitch or so I'm wondering if we're losing vertical speed. No, we're gaining vertical speed still. Okay. So that would be reasonably fine. We would just be sitting here for the moment. And the real question is, how much fuel do we have left over when we get into orbit, right? Now, we're not launching at a perfect time here. It's okay. We'll need a little bit of inclination change. We'd need that anyway. I'm mostly just interested in seeing what this ends up looking like, and our staging might be a little wrong, too. We're able to hold attitude. That's a good sign. We're moving pretty slowly, though. Like, we're not very high up in the atmosphere at this moment. Our lateral speed is a fair amount above our vertical speed. I have concerns about overheats, but let's let this continue to burn for now. We need to gain a fair amount of altitude still, so I'm just going to continue to burn here, and we should see our vertical speed going up fairly quickly, eventually. Our thrust to weight is definitely improving. It's up to around three at this point. So that's a very solid thrust to weight. We are going to be losing our side boosters eventually. And if we look at our trajectory, we can see that our apoapsis is pretty high up. So actually we could make the argument that we should be sitting around here or so at this point. This might be a little too aggressive, We might not have quite enough altitude. Okay, side boosters are out of here. Fantastic. The next stage is the fairing, which is actually correct, remarkably. Okay, we can see our time to apoapsis dropping. Our thrust to weight on this stage is pretty low. We are about high enough that we can ditch the fairing. That will improve matters. So let's do that right about 60 kilometers. So right about now. 
Off goes that bearing and exposes these parts. The docking of this might be a little bit awkward, but we should be able to get that done. And we can see our apoapsis is high enough at this point, and our thrust to weight is 1.33, which isn't the worst in the world. Time to apoapsis is still dropping, but it's dropping slowly at this time. We're still sitting at 10% here, or rather 10 degrees, and I would like to bring that down a bit. No doubt about that. In fact, at the speed that apoapsis is going up, I'm going to drop this down to a zero pitch at this time. So that apoapsis is going to continue to go up. You can see the time to apoapsis is dropping, but it is dropping at about two seconds per second. Or I guess two... Yeah, it's taking two seconds for it to go down. So that is a reasonably good sign. Now we've got 35% fuel left here, and I'm looking at our speeds here. Looks like this is going to get us just barely into orbit. and have like maybe 100 or 200 meters per second left over. Which is a decent amount if we don't need a major inclination change. Now, our timing is not the best in the world here. I just wanted to see if this design was even going to lift this in a reasonable way, and it seems like it is, remarkably. I'm actually slightly surprised by that. More than slightly. I'm rather surprised by that. Okay. Shutting down the engines, we're going to enter a coast phase here, and let's just, at the apoapsis, do a quick burn here to bring ourselves up to a circularized position. So let's turn the sensitivity down a bit, and we'll set it up to be about there. 293 meters per second seems good. We can also extend our solar panels, which I need to move. But there we go. And we're doing our last burn here. Okay. Really chasing that node. Really, really chasing the node. But it's fine. We got it under control. So let's move this back to velocity prograde for now. We'll get that under control eventually. And the question is, how much DV would it take... If we wanted to actually just go for this. Now you can see our inclination isn't right. And that's because our timing wasn't wasn't right. So if we burned at the descending node, how much would it take to get us up to... Okay, that's going to be like four degrees of inclination. That's going to be a fair amount of dV. So we need to be at like 30.02, right? So something about like... That's very insensitive. We can see it's going to be about 300 meters per second. Okay. So something approximately like that, right? And how much do we have left in this stage? 251. I think this is viable if we launch at the correct time. So let's pull this back and I'm going to fully undo it because I want to change the position of those solar panels. So we're going to come up here and we're going to clip on in. I'm going to grab these guys and move them out a little bit. There we go. And we'll just have them be attached on there like that. Okay, cool. I think if we go straight up a little bit more, we'll probably be better off. We'll spend less time in the atmosphere and lose less to drag. But our main problem is our initial takeoff thrust to weight. So we'll see what that ends up feeling like. So let's put this on the DSC launch pad and let's do a real launch here. Okay, so we are going to select the spaceport and now we need to get the camera lined up here. There we go. And we need to move on forward here until we are in line with the inclination. So right about now or so. This is pretty close. We'll call that good enough. So we're going to be setting our heading to 60 degrees. We are ascending here. We need to go northward, so that is fine. We're not going to set our pitch. We're just going to take right on off here and go straight up for right now. Staging also seemed absolutely fine. I didn't have any problems with that, although I technically didn't check it. We'll keep an eye on it on the way through, and we may have to manually stage. That's fine. So 
So we just need to build ourselves a fair amount of vertical speed here. And we're going to start heading over once our apoapsis is about 20, at which point we're going to bring this over to about 70 degrees. Or maybe 45 at 20. That might, uh, maybe 60. I'm not entirely certain. <laughs> One of those. Regardless, right now we're at 8, so we've got a ways to go. Our thrust to weight is definitely improving. We're up to about two. So that's getting better. If we had much more weight here, I would definitely be making the argument that we need to increase our thruster capacity. But as it is, I think it's reasonably fine. Okay, so that's 20. I'm gonna bring this over to 60 degrees. We're gonna sit here and start building up some horizontal speed. We're gonna drop down to 45 once we reach 40. So now we're at 35 and 40 kilometers now. So let's drop this to a 45 degree pitch. How are we doing on these boosters? 22%, okay. So now we are at 60. I'd like to drop this down to a 15 degree pitch. There we go. And we're going to continue to burn here until our apoapsis is in space, vacuum. So that's 80. So right about now. And now we're going to go to a pitch of zero. Okay, so we're gonna be losing these boosters in a moment. There we go. Boosters are kind of, that is really weird. The way that that clipped through like that I have no idea how that didn't destroy everything. Okay, well that's fine. Our altitude is high enough now to jettison the fairing. So that is perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. That'll help us boost up our thrust to weight. We don't want to keep that fairing around if we don't have to. Okay, so now we're just going to burn this horizontal speed. And we can see we definitely need quite a lot more. No doubt about that. Our monoprop is on. Stop it, monoprop. I did not do that earlier. I should have. Okay, so we're just going to burn up this lateral speed here until we are at an apoapsis of 100 kilometers, as before. Now, we went up more, which means that we're going to be fighting gravity more, but it also means we get out of the atmosphere more. I'm not sure where the exact position that we want to set that for optimally is for this design. For right now, I think we'll just leave this be. We can see time to apoapsis is dropping, but our thrust to weight is getting up there. In terms of fuel in this stage, we've got 39% left which is enough to get us up into orbit, plus a little bit of maneuver room, which is very similar to what we had before. So let's get these solar panels extended. Not like we, strictly speaking, need them, but let's get that extended anyway. And of course, this stage here is going to have very little dB to it. So we'll see if that's enough. For now, I'm just watching this time to apoapsis. It's sitting at 36 seconds. So I think, yeah, it's gonna start going up here very soon. I'm looking at our lateral velocity and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, there it goes. 37, 38, 39, perfect. So we don't have a lot of DV left in this booster. This is a heavy payload, of course. And let's just accelerate this up a little more. It looks like our previous ascent profile was a little bit more efficient, which isn't terribly surprising to me. I just wanted to trial that. But yeah, you can see here, we've got 197 meters per second left. That's fine. So for now, we're going to plan a burn at the apoapsis and we're going to... Hmm. Yeah, that timing is definitely not great. I want to bring this out to be somewhere around, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, somewhere around here, 99.5 kilometers is fine. So that is going to be 115 meters per second and we will go ahead and execute that. So we'll still have a little bit of DV left in this for an inclination change. I'm very concerned about having enough DV to get to the station though. 
Okay, that is my current concern. So at this point, we would need to come around to the ascending node of target. So up over here, and we'd need to get our inclination up to the current target inclination is 30.01. So we would need to bring this up a little bit to be, not that way, this way. So 30.01. So something along the lines of that. 165 meters per second. So we don't have enough in this to do that. How much do we have in this guy? That's the question. We'll lock to the plan burn. Let's execute this burn. And we'll see how this goes. Staging appears to be correct. Okay. Okay. How much do we have in this? Oh, we have almost a kilometer per second in this. That's more than I expected to see. I expected to see about 500 meters per second in it. I think this is good then. Yeah, I think this is fine. So the question is, do we want to plan for the rest of this burn a little bit better? I think the answer to that is a distinct possibly. Definitely maybe. Yeah, I'm going to cut the throttle and I'm going to cancel that burn. Now we're going to go around to this descending node here. So the target descending node. And we're going to do the same sort of burn. But this time we're planning to actually have the... Uh, actually planning to have the engines that we have at this point so that'll be useful uh that's definitely still overshooting okay so about there yeah do it so that'll be a 47 second burn that seems fine let's light up these engines and get into that inclination so that looks good and then the question is how many orbits are we going to need to take I don't know, but we'll fast forward through this. It's a bit of a lengthy burn. Our thrust to weight is very, very low on this, which is not surprising. Okay, so we've got about five seconds left in this burn coming out of the warp. Two, one, and zero. So 30.02, that's close enough. That'll definitely be fine. Okay, so now we need to see about getting ourselves in a rendezvous, right? So we can bring this out over this way, but that timing is definitely not great. We're going to need to do a few orbits here. So let's go ahead and do a warp. Okay, and if we look at that, now we can look at this warp or this orbit. And it's... Decent. Okay. So something like this. We'd be a kilometer separated, and we need to keep in mind our thrust to weight here is very, very low. So that is fine. Let's go ahead and execute this burn. There we go. So 1.07 kilometers and 106 meters per second. Now, we know that this is about a two-minute burn to execute that 106 meters per second. That's fine. That is absolutely A-OK. -okay. We can work with that. We're just going to have to be cautious with it. But honestly, coming together a kilometer apart, that's not so bad. That's really, really not so bad. So let's just get into position for this, and that'll be fine. We've got a fair amount of burn time here, 80 seconds. Let's fast forward through that a bit. And it is about time to put a cut in here. So after this burn, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's just complete this burn as it is and see what it ends up looking like. We've got about 50 seconds left on it. 40 seconds. 30 this should be pretty decent. Pretty close to about a kilometer apart. I think a kilometer apart is fine. I'm not going to try to target closer when our thrust to weight is this low. Okay. So that's almost two kilometers apart. 
I'm going to burn it manually a little bit, and we're going to target about that kilometer distance. Okay. I'm actually going to bring it into like 500 meters. Okay, we lost efficiency there. Cutting the engines. We're not going to start going up. This is the closest we're going to get without additional maneuvering. That's fine. We can tune that in later on. We're going to need 109 meters per second to break. And, of course, we currently have 678 meters per second, which is plenty. So this should be fine. We should be able to complete this and deorbit this stage with what we've got here, in theory. But that will be a next episode sort of thing. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Atala, and... Andy Magar, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Xenocyte, Hero Marutsu, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, The Lounge SPL, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.